a year since I traveled to the Democratic Republic of Congo, but I still vividly remember the modern day slavery scene in the diamond mines. On our drive, we passed lines of people making the long trek to the deep excavations where hundreds of people dig by hand through the silt water to find a speckle of hope. Not surprisingly, women can dig, but only men sift to find the diamond nuggets to sell. At these mines, girls selling food earn 20 cents a day. Their desperation makes them vulnerable to sex trafficking, which is rampant there. There are terms that refer to girls aged 6 to 8 years old or 9 to 15 years old, so you can place an order. As the country emerges from a 10-year war that claimed over 5 million lives and violated the dignity of up to half a million women and girls through organized rapes, one has to ask how to best support community efforts at rebuilding. I am Congolese and direct the Sub-Saharan Africa program at the Global Fund for Women. I am often asked what can be done to help the Congo, especially women. So I wrote a report with our advisor from the Congo, Amy Kadi, about the strategies women's groups in Congo are using to empower women to be agents of change and to create a stronger nation based on the respect of law and order. Since 2004, the Global Fund for Women's support to women's groups in the Congo has quadrupled, and we've seen that grants making to women's groups, despite the closed political space and weak infrastructure, can make a difference in the lives of women and their communities in the aftermath of conflict. We heard from Congolese women's groups that ending sexual violence requires stopping the exploitative mining practices by foreign companies looting Congo's rich minerals, like diamonds, like the tantalum used in cell phones and video games, like the cobalt which industrialized nations need to build planes and tanks. Meanwhile, 80% of Congolese are unemployed and 50% of children are not in school. Women in Congo told us that efforts to rebuild the country would remain in vain as long as Western governments continue to send arms to militia movements or continue to interfere in Congolese politics by supporting repressive leaders. When I think of the women and girls who told us their horrifying experiences of sexual torture, I keep thinking of the modern weapons that make this torture possible and the origins of these weapons. They are not made in Congo. Our new Congo report is a study of the underlying causes of violence in the region and how Global Fund for Women's support has helped women's groups to promote peace, justice, women's leadership, and respect for human rights. Over five years, Global Fund for Women supported 70 groups with almost one million in grants. The report shares 10 case studies and recommendations for donors and activists. We invite you to read and learn, then act.